Hello, and welcome to this lesson on construction funding. And today, we will review the construction funding concepts necessary to model the construction funding. We already modeled the construction costs in the previous lesson. We also completed modeling the construction debt size in the prior lessons. So, now we know how much we have to spend during the construction period, and where the money is going to come. It will be debt and equity. However, the project will have to pay interest during construction on the construction loan and financing fees. These IDC and financing fees will also be a part of project costs. And since the project does not generate any revenue yet, the IDC and financing fees have to be financed by equity. The construction, equipment, and financing costs will be uses of funds. These are the items that we will spend our money on. And the construction debt and equity will be the sources of funds. Note that the project's construction debt size is based on the project cash flows, and it does not depend on the project costs. If project costs increase, this increase will be mostly covered by additional equity funding. However, in the case when SPV pays taxes, an increase in project costs will increase the fixed assets and depreciation expense, which will decrease the taxes paid. And therefore, the construction loan size will also increase as reduced taxes means higher CFADs. The construction loan is typically refinanced by the term loan at the construction completion. There are two types of refinancing. First, we've got soft refinancing, which is a renegotiation of the loan conditions, such as interest rates and covenants, conditions that do not fundamentally change the risk profile of the loan. Hard refinancing is really raising a new loan from a new lender to take out the construction loan. In hard refinancing, we may raise a loan with a longer tenor, or bigger loan principal amount than necessary to take out the construction loan. Hard refinancing completely changes the loan riskiness profile. In this course, we will only be modeling the soft refinancing. Let's now review the construction debt interest and fees that the project has to pay during the construction period. First, there will be interest during construction or IDC. Then, we have to pay the upfront fee to the lead arranger for loan origination efforts. It is sometimes called arranging fee or origination fee, and it is typically 0.5% to 1.5% of the loan amount. The upfront fee is payable at the financial close. Since lenders will be committing a construction loan to the project from the start of the project, they will want to receive compensation for that commitment, and this compensation is called a commitment fee. The commitment fee is typically in the range of 40 to 80 basis points per annum, and it is based on the undrawn debt balance. The commitment fee is paid during the construction period. Sometimes, the project company will also have to pay an agent bank fee, which is a fee that goes to the bank, which performs the role of the agent bank. Agent bank is responsible for administering the loan, including maintaining loan documents, keeping up-to-date information about the project, and maintaining financial model among other tasks. Having talked about the construction debt, let's now remind ourselves about equity financing. Equity usually comes in the form of the ordinary equity or sometimes preferred equity, and it may also come in the form of the loan from project sponsors to the project company. Shareholder loans are used to reduce the taxes paid because interest on the shareholder loan is tax deductible. Also, in countries where dividends payout is restricted by retained earnings, shareholder loans are used to release the trapped cash on the balance sheet. In the United States, you also have another source of equity, which is called tax equity. We will introduce the tax equity financing later on in the course when we discuss renewable projects in the United States. In renewable energy projects based on the PPA, debt is usually drawn on a pro rata basis with equity investments, and this is the approach we will take in this course. While in riskier projects, such as projects in the mining industry, equity investment is made first, before debt drawdowns.